Welcome to video number 12 for Control Shift Enter Mastering Excel Array Formulas. Hey, we're in the Workbook Array Formulas DVD book. Start on the sheet topics. Hey, we want to talk about conditional formatting with array formulas. Now, that's pretty amazing, right? You may know how to do some conditional formatting, maybe even know how to do some with formulas, but basically, almost any kind of array formula that you can think up can also be used for conditional formatting. Now I'm going to click on this link here for sheet 21. Now the first thing right off the bat, we need to understand that conditional formatting is volatile, which means it recalculates often and can slow overall spreadsheet calculation time. So this kind of sounds like a recipe for real slowness. We've talked about some of the you know these huge array formulas. They slow down calculation just because they have so many cell references and calculations. If we mix that with conditional formatting, maybe we're really going to slow things down. So you got to be careful when you're doing conditional formatting with array formulas. Now here's our data set. We have city and time. And back in video three, example one, we saw how to ex uh, show the minimum time for each city. Now we know there's no min if for uh, this cell right here to look through this data set and find the smallest value for Oakland 6. But no problem. As we've seen many times in our uh, later videos after video number th uh, 3, absolutely beautiful. We can use the if function to not dump all these values into the min, but just the ones that are for Oakland. So if I highlight that and hit the F9 key, boom, absolutely beautiful. If is great for doing array calculations to dump only certain numbers into a function. Now, escape. That formula right there, we entered it with Control Shift Enter. If you look up here, you can see those curly brackets, right? When we use this formula in our for conditional formatting, we're actually going to have to come over here, highlight, open a dialog box, and then create the same or similar array formula. But guess what? When you put it into the conditional formatting dialog box, it doesn't care if it's a regular formula or an array formula. It does not need Control Shift Enter. You just put it there, and it works. Now, we're going to have to highlight this range open up the dialog box, create our formula. But sometimes it's easier to come over to some cells off to the side and create your formula. See if it works. See if you get your pattern of trues and falses in the right place. And then copy your formula and paste it into the dialog box. Not only that, but when you build a formula in the cells, it's much easier to get cell references. You have range finder. You can see the color coding. So especially for large, complicated formulas, pretty nice to be able to build them in the cells. Now, what is our formula going to do? If I choose Seattle, all I want is I don't want both Seattles to be highlighted yellow. I want just the min value. Well, we know that there's no min if, so we're going to use this array formula. But check this out. There's one other thing we have to remember. When highlighting a row in conditional formatting, we're going to have to use mixed cell references. All right, let's see how to do this. Hey, min, if, and I'm going to highlight for the logical test. Hey, all of these, and I'm an F4. Anytime you're equal to that, F4, then what do I want? I want these values. F4. Value of false, I don't need it. Close parentheses, close parentheses, Control, Shift, Enter. Now let's just copy this over and down. Now, huh, that's giving me four everywhere. But if we think about it, this column has the numbers, right? So these two fours look like they're pointing to the right number. So I'm going to amend this and say anytime that is equal to we're putting a comparative operator into our formula, so it turns it into a logical formula resulting in true or false. And I'm going to click on that cell reference. Now think about this. When I, I'm in this cell, which is parallel to this cell when we build our conditional formatting, so I need this both of these cells here to look at that 5. But when I copy this formula down, it needs to move. So I need to lock it F4, F4, F4 three times to lock 
the column, but not the row. All right, let's see if this works. Control, Shift, Enter. Copy it over and down. All right, so we get our two trues. But what if Tacoma had a 4? That would give us um, two trues here that we don't want. So we actually have another condition. We have to ask the question, is anything in um, for every row, is the number equal to 4 and is the city equal to Seattle? So I'm going to Control Z, leave that 8. I'm going to put this inside an AND function. I'm going to go AND. Now I'm going to say, is that cell right there? And notice, that cell has to be also locked on the column, but not the row. So I hit F4, lock the column, but not the row. Is that equal to Seattle, F4? That's going to be our first logical test, comma, second logical test. I come to the end and close parentheses. Control, Shift, Enter. Copy it over and double click and send it down. Now, if Tacoma also has a 4, boom. If I change this to Tacoma, I can see the patterns of trues and falses have changed. Now, of course, conditional formatting is based on some logical test. Our logical test just happens to be an array formula, right? If the cell sees a true, it gets formatting. All right, so now I'm going to notice bloop, those are all the formulas we're going to need. But those formulas can't go into the actual cells over here, right? But they'll go into the dialog box. And in memory, they will be copied over and down as if they are in the cells. That's why this range is exactly parallel to that range there. Now, when we do conditional formatting, you want to be sure and copy the formula from the uppermost left corner. And when you highlight the range, make sure the active cell is in the upper left corner. Actually, it doesn't matter. If you copy from this corner, the active cell better be right down here. All right, so the active cell parallel to where I copied it. I'm going to go to Home, Conditional Formatting, New Rule. Or I can use the keyboard shortcut that works in any version, Alt-O-D. New Rule, Use a Formula, and down here, Control-V. Absolutely amazing. Format, and you can format it however you want, including after 2007, number formatting. I'm going to select Fill. That's it. All right, so now if I change this, if I go back to Tacoma and I change this back to 8, I guess it's still Tacoma, huh? right? If I change it to 12, boom, it changes. Absolutely amazing. Now. Again, as we mentioned, if conditional formatting recalculates often and the array formula is big, it could be a recipe for slow calculations. So let's look at another array formula. But let's use a helper cell. Now, this example, we have some racers names and the times. And back in video 11, example 10, we saw how to list each racer's name and always extract the top three. In the, for the conditional formatting, I'd like to be able to select a racer's name and automatically have their top three highlighted the entire row. Not only that, but if I change this, I want to just see the first, the second, or the third. All right, I'm going to well, let's go over here and look and remind ourselves what we did back in video 11. We could use the small and the if function. Absolutely beautiful combo. And before Excel 2010, that's what you should use. Again, we don't want all the values dumped into the small. We want just the ones for Caden. If you're using 2010 or later, you can use the aggregate. 15 means small, 14 means large. So we're going to make an array calculation right here. Again, small if. We know when we use the small and the if, the if function dumps in falses for the racers who are not Caden, right? With the aggregate function, we see divide by zero errors. 
And how do we avoid those? That 6. I'm going to click Control Z right there in the Options argument. So all right, let's do it over here. I need a helper cell to find the third fastest time for Isaac. In case there's ties, right? There could be a tie for third. We want to find that value. So I'm going to use my aggregate. I'm going to say for the function 15, comma, absolutely beautiful, ignore errors, number 6, comma, and our array. Well, what am I interested? I'm interested in the time. So the times, that right now would give me all of them. But now I divide by some condition, right? Whoever in here is equal to Isaac. Now this formula, whoops. And I'm interested in, notice this, that's really polite. Watch this. Comma, it didn't, the bold K argument didn't show up. That means I didn't finish typing out everything in the array. And it looks like I forgot a close parenthesis. I need to force that equal sign to happen before the division. Now, or I can highlight this and hit the F9. Absolutely beautiful. I get just the times for Isaac. Not all the times, just the ones for Isaac for our condition. Control Z. Now I come to the end and comma K. All right, so what I'm asking up here is show me the third smallest one for Isaac. So if I change this to 2, I see uh, 50.2. If I change it to 1, all right, now we can use this value. If we didn't have a helper cell, just like in our first example in this video, we'd have to put this up here, and every single cell would have to uh, show this value. Just like up here when we saw all the cells equal to 4, all the cells right now would equal to 50.3. But that's a smart way to do it, if you can set it up this way, right? Now, because our array formula is down here, it's a simple AND. So equals AND. I have two conditions to conditionally format the row. That cell, F4, three times, column locked, row not, is equal to that criteria, F4 comma, the second logical test, and this number right here, F4 to lock the column but not the row, is less than, because we want everything faster, or equal to this hurdle, F4, close parentheses. So we got our mixed cell references. That's the part of it that will highlight the entire row. Now notice we're building it in this cell, copying it over and down, so it's as if it was here, right? Control Enter, copy it over and down. OK, so we got our patterns of trues. Absolutely beautiful. So now, and we can test it, right? So now we get our trues, true, true. Now I'm going to copy from the upper. Actually, let me just show you. It doesn't matter which corner. I'm going to copy from here. But notice if I'm copying the formula from here, I better have this as the active cell. It's copy, escape, and I'm going to highlight active cell, Alt O D, Alt N, arrow, 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 tab, Control V. And then I'm going to format it somehow. Not an array formula, but we have a helper cell with an array formula down here. Click OK, click OK. By the way, I didn't mention, of course, but because this is video 21, we've done a lot. This formula, of course, doesn't need Control-Shift-Enter because it is uh, aggregate can handle an array calculation without Control-Shift-Enter. It's still an array formula, just doesn't require Control-Shift-Enter. And there we have it. Let's check this out. Let's go to. Let's go one. I love it. That is so cool. Now that is magic, right? Excel doing magic. All right, and then Christoph and then Isaac. So there we have our conditional uh, formatting. Now, if you had used this formula, then that cell in every single one of these uh, formulas would have to be that whole entire formula. And you'd definitely have to lock everything. Now, just to show you in 2000, 
and 7 and earlier, it's no problem. You just do in uh, for small, you do your if. You say anytime anything in here, F4 is equal to that criteria. F4 then, please give me the numbers. F4, if I was going to put this in the uh, formula over here, I'd have to lock everything. So close parentheses, and then the K, F4. And this requires control shift and enter. All right, so conditional formatting with array formulas, no problem, whether it's a helper cell to save on the fact that conditional formatting recalculates often, or actually building a formula, dumping it into the dialog box with an array formula, and not having to do Control Shift Enter in that dialog box. All right, next video, we'll talk, I think it's going to be about, oh, the mo.molt function. All right, we'll see you next video.